Is your Bernese Mountain Dog displaying reactive or very aggressive behaviours that have got you significantly concerned? Well, don't worry, because that is exactly what I'm going to help you with in today's video. Welcome back to the Femrear Bernie's Mountain Dog Show. And if you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FemreaCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you become a high level canine leader for your Bernie's Mountain Dog and learning everything you could ever want to know about these incredible dogs. So if you are new here, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button and turning on that notification bell so that you never miss a future Bernie's Mountain Dog video. Now we're going to dive into today's video and today we're going to talk about the Bernese Mountain Dog and the aggression and reactivity within the breed. Now as a canine behaviourist I specialise in reactivity and aggressive type cases usually with large powerful working and guarding breeds. So this kind of is my bread and butter and what I help people do every single day. Now here at Fenrir I think the reason we have success with these cases is because we take a two-step approach of treating the root cause and really getting down to an actual solution to the problem as well as giving management strategies and effective management strategies whereas a lot of people will only focus on management strategies and if you're going to people in the positive only world those management strategies are usually some kind of uh, distraction based approach with food laws and they very very rarely work especially in the real world when whatever the environmental stimuli or trigger is that's causing that irrational aggressive or reactive response is more interesting or stressful or overwhelming than the bit of cheese or meat you have in your hand and even if you can distract them away they'll take the food and go straight back and we're not actually fixing the problem at the root cause so we're going to talk about both of those things the root cause fix and an effective management strategy whilst we go through that root cause fix and we'll start with the root cause and the root cause of the vast majority of aggression and reactivity within Bernie's mountain dogs comes from a place of fear and and anxiety now that might be counterintuitive especially if it appears to be incredibly dominant or aggressive behaviors that's actually very unlikely and like I say much more stems from anxiety and fear that anxiety and fear comes from a dog that doesn't have a clear calm consistent leader in its life that it feels it can seek guidance and direction from when they don't know where to go for guidance and direction when these stimuli or triggers happen they then start to make decisions for themselves and in this society and culture that we have today that's very foreign for a dog and those decisions that they make tend to be the wrong decisions which then leads to the aggression and reactivity that we're seeing so what we need to do is restructure that fear and anxiety by helping you become a high level canine leader that your dog understands it can go to you for guidance and direction and trust you to deal with any situation that might occur no matter how frightening or stressful that situation might be and to do that we utilize our boot camp program now I've been using that program for a long time and since the growth of our other channels on the Femrear Canine Show and Femrear Canine Training we've turned that into an online program so that we can help as many people around the world as possible so if you are interested in that there'll be a link down in the description box below but anyway the the basis of that boot camp program is to teach you how to be a high level canine leader because that is the most critical and important part of the process it all comes down to you the reason I went and got a degree in education is because my job isn't to train your dog for you that's easy I could do that no problem the difficult part is educating people educating the owners on how to become a high level canine leader so that you can take that dog away and you can implement it yourself as a high level canine leader so that's the main part of the boot camp program and then it goes into a four week procedure that allows you you to implement rules expectations and boundaries that allows that transition to take place of the dog giving up ownership to yourself as the new leader in that scenario and in that household there's also lots of areas within that month to work on obedience now far too many people focus only on obedience as the be all and end all for dog training and a relationship with a dog and that's not the case whatsoever however it is incredibly important it does allow us to build relationship with our dogs in terms of working with them but it's also incredible for communication of letting them know what we do want now in this society where positive only approach is the be all and end all 
where people fall down with that approach is that that's excellent at teaching them what we do want in forms of obedience work and throughout that boot camp protocol we would use a positive based approach of teaching a nice walk to heal which for reaction especially reactivity and aggression on lead a nice loose lead is incredibly helpful when it comes to the management strategies that we'll talk about a little bit later on but what we also then need to do is that going back to what I was saying about positive only is excellent at teaching those new things. It's excellent at teaching a dog what we do want. It isn't very effective at teaching a dog what we don't want from them. So that then takes us to our management strategies. That again, we found to be incredibly highly successful. If we try and do a positive based approach to teaching a dog what we don't want, they often very quickly fall flat and don't work. And when people come to me, they tend to come to me as a last resort because they've been through three or four local trainers that have tried a positive only approach hasn't worked and then they're at their wits end they find me on youtube see the success we're able to have then they reach out and i'll often travel a very long way to come and meet me and hopefully be able to have me help with these scenarios and because we're able to communicate with our dogs utilizing positive based approach of what we do want but we also have a good ability at being able to communicate effectively what we don't want and to achieve that we use a process called correct redirect and then back to reinforce now whenever i say the term correct and correction within dog world or punishment people start to panic a little bit and the propaganda that's out there around positive only being the only way to train dogs in my opinion is is one of um, the root causes of this epidemic that we've got of so many reactive and aggressive type dogs at the minute because people have lost the ability to be able to communicate with their dogs what they don't want just as much as being able to communicate what we do want so when we have an aggressive uh, a case of a bernie's mountain dog like we're talking about today we correct we redirect and we reinforce so we start with a correction and the reason we've taught a nice heel is we're on a nice loose lead with the dog now what we don't want them is out in front making the decisions and on a taut lead because when we get into a game of tug of war and that's no use for correction whatsoever and just causes further harm to the dog when the dog's on a nice loose lead by our side there's no pressure being applied to the dog whatsoever and inherently is yes thank you I appreciate the way you're walking right now but when that trigger or that is stimuli comes in and the dog starts to bubble up and that reactivity is about to spill out at that stage right there we come in with a well-timed correction now we want to use as minimal correction as possible but in these scenarios of reactivity or aggression you have a dog that is very likely going to end up in a shelter or be put down because of that reactivity or aggression or god forbid they get away from you and go towards that other dog or even worse person and cause serious harm or damage especially for a big powerful breed like a bernese mountain dog so i absolutely feel comfortable in recommending a correction or physical correction if required and i absolutely feel comfortable coming on youtube and suggesting that you do the same at home providing it is applied fairly with good timing and comes from a place of love of trying to save this dog's life because that is what we're trying to achieve here at Fenrir is to make enough of an impact to be able to educate as many people as possible on how to become a high level canine leader so that we can stop the amount of dogs ending up in shelters and euthanized and corrections can be a part of that procedure to help have happy healthy dogs and it comes from a place of love not wanting to hurt them wanting Wanting to help them and to save their life so ideally we could go in with a verbal correction what we're trying to achieve is that response is coming up with the dog that reactivity that aggressive type behavior is about to come in and we instantly snap them out of it we let them know stop I don't like what you're doing. I am in control of this situation and this scenario. I am the leader here. You must look up to me for guidance and direction and I'm going to tell you what it is that I want from you. If you do that thing, then we can go back to being nice and rewarding and giving you praise and treats and food. All those nice things can happen. But right now, you are doing the wrong thing and I am going to let you know you're doing the wrong thing because I am in control and I'm not going to allow you to do that. Ideally, verbal correction might be enough. A good stern no or ah, ah might be enough just to break their attention and allow us to move on to the next stage of redirection. If it doesn't, then yes, we might have to utilize a physical correction that will be in the form of a lead correction. 
whether that's a slip lead or a prong collar, we give a very quick correction to the dog, let them snap them out of it, bring their focus and attention back to us as the calm, consistent leader in that scenario. Once we've got that attention back, we then very quickly move on from correction. We leave that be. That was implemented in a fair, quick, well-timed and uh, instant approach as soon as that behavior came up instantly let them know that it wasn't acceptable you yep yeah, sorry boss what is it that you want from me again then we redirect using our communication that we have using our obedience that we taught with positive reinforcement we let them know i would like you to walk to heal please fantastic when they come back into that heel position and you might have to go bounce between those a few times just to let them know no i mean what i'm saying i want you in this heel position please when we get them back into that position then we can then very quickly move on to reinforcing and praising that desired behavior and we can utilize treats verbal praise physical praise whatever it is that your dog likes and you like to do we can then very quickly go back to that stage so moving forward as we're going through that boot camp program of restructuring that relationship and utilizing this management strategy of correct redirect and reinforce you'll find that those negative behaviors will start to come down less and less as they learn that you don't find that acceptable you'll find that the time that the dog wants to offer the desired behavior first time round increases more and more because as a good leader we've let them know what we don't want and what we do want and if they offer what we do want then praise and nice things happen. So over time, they'll start to seek that behavior first time around in the first place. And over time, we'll get to a point where we're having to correct the dog less and less, and we're able to praise the dog more and more. And we'll get to a stage where the dog will offer that desired behavior up front first time around, which then allows us to finally live back in that world of positive praise only, which we want to do. We love dogs. We want them to be happy, healthy, and content to not live in fear and anxiety. And the best way to do that is by being a calm consistent leader that is able to effectively communicate not only what we do want but also what we don't want so i hope you found that helpful i hope it was a quick breakdown of the of the methodology and the theory behind our behavior modification processes for a behavior like this if you did find it useful hit that thumbs up button don't forget if you are new here to hit that subscribe button as we've got new bernie's mountain dog videos coming to this channel every single week so i can't wait to see you on the next episode of the femria bernie's mountain dog show